Hello, good evening, dear audience, for the next 15 minutes of Dr. Leo Breinbaum. Today it's about evolution. It's about the way human evolution shaped our immune system, shaped our brain, and shaped even our eyebrows. As you've seen the title of the 15 minutes today, it's about the connection between eyebrows, acne, human behavior, COVID-19, yeah, and the development of the placenta. For the first moment, you probably think this guy is completely crazy. I am a little bit crazy, but they are really connected with each other. Perhaps you've never thought about why only one animal is capable of developing acne. The only animal capable of doing that are human beings and a few chimpanzees, a few chimpanzees species, which live in, in domestic circumstances. Where does that come from? Uh, acne, you, you probably think it's weird. But the, th the thing is, we have an incredible amount of, of um, um, <laughs> of, of glands producing, producing sebo, uh, you know, the fat of the skin. And the real thing should be, why do we produce that? Uh, with, because it's very weird. There's not any animal doing that. And if you then look when those um, glands are active, they start to be active when you, uh, when you, when you mature sexually. But incredible but true, when uh, a woman gives birth, the pressure on the head of the almost newborn activates, activates those glands, the, the skin becomes fat and it lubricates the skin and then through this lubrication uh, pathway you can give birth to a kid. And so, so that's the reason why we have these glands and and that is really because we are human and then we have to ask ourselves where do, do those glands come from uh, so what made um, the evolution produce these glands lubricating the skin and and facilitating uh, facilitating uh, birth uh, because without that cap capacity our head is so big and the human pelvis is so small that kids would not be able to come out and that's why you see that after birth very much children have a newborn acne that, di that, that disappears again uh, after a few months or a few years but afterwards, uh, when you are 14, 15 years, you have acne. And you should really consider that as an evolutionary um, scar. That you need those glands to be born, uh, but you pay a certain, a certain price for that. And that is acne in adult life, or in adolescent life. But the, the question still raises, rises, where do those uh, glands come from? An incredible but true, uh, that is a mutation in human beings caused by a virus. Okay. The next step is humans are mammals. Mammalian animals have a placenta. And the placenta uh, is developed more or less something of 50 to 80 million years ago. Yeah? A period in which mammals appear in evolution. You look to the placenta and you, and you ask yourself what the hell happened because 
before the placenta, there were no mammals. And then, uh, on an evolutionary time scale, very sudden, there are mammalian animals. What happens there? Where does that placenta come from? Incredible, by a RNA virus, which now is part of human beings. The human endogenous RNA virus that is active to produce the placenta, which is a hermetic closed organ. And this hermetic closure is by fusion of cells. And this fusion of cells, which produces a syncytium, that is induced by today a virus which was incorporated long, long, long ago. And today we are mammalians because of a virus. The third thing we, 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 sp we speak about is by eyebrows. Uh, it's very weird. Uh, human beings have the most mobile eyebrows of all animals in the world. Uh, it is evidenced that human beings, when they don't know each other, that, that we, we transfer, transfer some subliminal messages to other people. It's very interesting. Uh, look what I'm doing. I, I, my eyebrows go up. And when I look at you and you see that I do this, then you start, you start trusting me because I'm looking at you. And do you see that my eyes get bigger? And these big eyes, you see a lot of the, of the sclera, of the white sclera. And the bigger the sclera, the more trustful I am. So when I'm looking at you like this, yeah, you see, Ah, I am trustworthy. But you can do enormous th things with your eyebrows. You, you, you can also lift the inside of your eyebrows, you see? And I look a little bit like a child. And that's very interesting because we like child, childy people because they are trustworthy. Even your dog uses the eyebrows to, to seduce you as his his um, or hers next boss. Uh, those, the, those, those animals, they can also raise their eyebrows and then, you, and then you fall in love with them. And that's very different with Neanderthalers uh, because Neanderthalers, they have this huge uh, brain thing uh, as if there is a, 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 a paraguas in, Sp in Spanish, as if uh, it's a rain uh, shield but we have a flat one yeah? so so these eyebrows they are not so much related anymore uh, with things like protecting the eyes for sweat and there's much more to socialize and then you ask yourself what the hell has got to do with COVID-19 <laughs> because the socializing gene is a virus which was incorporated at the same moment as we became mammals. So you see that there is really a social brain in mammals, also in certain fishes. And those fishes have also incorporated, interesting, yeah, a virus which made them social. So you see, a virus responsible for placenta, a virus responsible for the sebaceous glands, a virus which is responsible for social interaction and for, and, um, not completely, partly for the flattening of our face. Uh, our dogs are social creatures. Yeah, very interesting. Yeah. The domestic dog come from wolves. Wolves, they cannot, they can hardly move their, their eyebrows. But our dogs can. Yeah. Our dogs look like 
wolf puppies the whole life through. And that's a socializing capacity. So they took over evolution and, and the development of eyebrows. Incredible if you only think of it uh, that by using your eyebrow movement, you socialize with other people. So we have acne, yeah, we have placental development, we have eyebrow development, and then we have COVID-19. And COVID-19 is also a virus. So we have to start to ask ourselves, what the hell have virus done with human evolution? And I can continue uh, talking about an enormous amount of other metamorphosic steps caused by virus. One more, uh, human beings are not able to produce their own vitamin C. Uh, so some, something like 52 million years ago, a virus um, infiltrated human beings and mutated the gene which was responsible for the conversion of glucose and vitamin C. So now we can, cannot produce vitamin C anymore, but that made us human. So now, what is then this all about related with COVID-19? For that, we need another viral mutation, which more or less happened something in between 6 million and 3 million years ago. There, we were still um, a hominoid, a, a, a homo species, but we were not a homo sapiens yet. Uh, we, we reproduced not only, not only with other homos like us, but also with, with other, we were, we, we, there was really interbreeding between, between different hominoid species. But there is a moment when Homo sapiens started to become Homo sapiens. A viral, a, a lethal virus which needed a sugar molecule, which is called NOI5GC, to infiltrate um, human beings. And that, and that virus killed all the people who could produce a super molecule, which is called NOI5GC. That sugar molecule is gone. We, don't, we, we cannot produce that anymore. And what is at this moment the big surprise? That all the animals which have lost the capacity of NOI5GC are the most susceptible animals for the corona virus the, uh, pandemic. So uh, the horseshoe bat cannot produce NOI5GC. The mink, the velvet, cannot produce NOI5GC. And human beings cannot produce NOI5GC. It's the first time that a virus uses a specific human molecule uh, which, which that because we don't have NOI5 GC and all, all other animals have both, um, NOI5 AC and GC, um, the virus uses NOI5 AC as an entrance molecule. And the question should be why the hell evolution and, and virus are part of evolution uh, have chosen, has chosen, and which is not true because you don't choose things, things happen, or perhaps there is a kind of a choice, has chosen for NOI5AC animals uh, to um, suffer from this virus. This is nothing new, as you see. A lot of metamorphosic moments are viral based. And the question should really be, could it be that evolution says, 
that those animals not producing no 5 tc producing only no 5 ac yeah, that there is a new metamorphosic moment in the life of those animals and i can already predict and i think that there is one thing very interesting going on is that for the first time in the history of human being there is one enemy attacking all human beings it is not about a blood group it is not about an individual molecule it is about a universal molecule yeah, present in all human beings in the whole world nobody is not susceptible we are all susceptible could it this produce a new species we'll see next week i will give a more in-depth answer to that question for today thank you very much for your attention and i'll see you next week